and the husband said he couldn't, that he didn't pick for a long time. Oh. Probably was sleeping, sleeping. Yeah. you know? Yes. Supposed to be resting time. Yeah. yeah, you can imagine they're being called and he started rushing to the hospital, and you know, just to see what they can do, I know. Yeah. You don't know what it is, like when nobody, mm. I personally appreciate it. I'm always saying, God, please, I don't want those kind of emergency calls, oh. because I, it can throw you off balance. Yeah. We don't pray for it. And that's why we keep praying for every member of our church. Mm. And we keep saying, Father, thank you that we all have life, that mm. we are strong, that we are healthy. We don't have anyone on the sick bed. It's mm. not that we are perfect. Mm. It's not that the church is so big, but it's just his mercy. Yes. It's just his mercy. And we want to say to you who have granted us good health, we're saying thank you on behalf of the church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the, Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Brethren, let's just seal the blood, I mean, the, uh, our testimonies with the blood of Jesus. Yes. Father, we come over this testimony with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, we continue to live to give testimony of your goodness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you adoration. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to take this here. Please, can we kindly pull it out from our bones? Okay. When we walk with the Lord. When we walk with the Lord. It's trust and obey. That's the hymn. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Has anyone gotten it? I think you should put trust and obey. Trust and obey.
God will yeah. grant yeah. us grace to trust Him. You yes. know, when, when God, when you want to involve God in, in, in your situation, you just do what? Trust Him. You just trust Him. You just trust Him. You just trust him, that's it. I want, I want to cite an example. I want to cite an example. Please, can you bring our baby? Let me use him. Yeah. I want to use him. When you trust God, the extent, I want to give a sample of when you trust God. Yeah. This is this pretty baby, handsome, cute baby. Who wants to take my, my beads? Okay. So now. I need someone to come and say, I must take this baby from you. This is, this is, I'm giving myself an example as God. And this is you and I. The baby is you and I. So, come and try and take this baby from me. Come on, Eroy. Try and carry him now. Hey, <laughs> That's my right there. No, leave me alone. So, you see? Yeah. Take this mommy. Don't mind her. So you see how he clinched to me. Mm. Even when she was trying to like, no, hello. He was trying to say, hello, hey, come on. You like saying, oh, you're my friend. That's the extent to which how God is holding mm. us. Mm. But when we just let go, you say, okay. Since you don't want me involved, okay, I back out. Mm. I want you to talk to God this morning. I say, Father, any situation that will make me Want, want you to back out of that situation in my life. Lord, may it not happen to me. I ask for grace to trust in you totally. Just like the hymn says. He said, trust and obey. You know, when you trust God, you obey what he's saying. I want us to talk to God and say, my Father and my God, the grace to trust you at all times, no matter how tough that situation may be. Lord, the grace to cling on you, no matter how the situation may be. Lord, I receive such grace this morning. In the name of Jesus. The grace to obey you, to be obedient, totally obedient. He said, where he sent, I will go. Where he has sent you, have you gone there? Are you there? Are you where he's sending you? I want you to say, Father, the grace to go where you send me. The grace to go where you send me. Lord, I receive it this morning. Thank you, my Father. Glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Thank you for the opportunity that we are among the living. Thank you for the opportunity that we can hear your word. Father, we say take all the glory. Daddy, we say take all the honor. Daddy, we say take all the exaltation and all the lifted up. This morning, we ask, O oh Lord, that you speak to our hearts in this interactive service, that you will do what only you can do. That by the time we are living here, all the blessings will be ours, and all the glory will be ascribed unto you. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Please help me welcome someone by your side. Please help me appreciate the person. Oh, it's your top. I love. It's lovely. Okay. You're looking nice. You're looking great. We are happy to have you. Yeah. Help me appreciate somebody. Yeah. Appreciate somebody. Appreciate somebody. Appreciate somebody. Appreciate somebody. Appreciate somebody. You love that. Appreciate somebody. Appreciate somebody. Appreciate somebody. I just remember the name only. Chelsea. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's this song I want to sing. It says, Be on to Please, can we be seated? Be on to me. I don't know if anyone knows it yet. According to your words, according to your promises, I can stand secure. Hold upon my heart. The truth that sets me free. That is the word of God. Mm. According to your word, oh Lord, be it unto me. I'll take it again. Be it unto me. According to your word. According to your word. According to your promises. According to your promises. I can stand secure. I can stand secure. Cap 
upon my heart. Craft upon my heart. The truth that set me free. The truth that sets me free. According to your words, O oh Lord. According to your, your words, O oh Lord. Lord. Be it unto me. Be it unto me. I want you to tell yourself and say, Father, let it be unto me according to your word. According to your word. It's a word of prophecy. Let it be unto me according to your word. In Jesus' name we have decreed. Amen. I would like us to pull up our Bibles. I'd like everybody to pick their Bible up. Pick your Bible up. Pick your Bible. Please, let's stand. Let's stand. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And I don't believe it's a scripture that all, all of us know. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. And we're going to read together as a church. Please, can we have a standing? Thank you so much. Please. Matthew 6 from verse 33. Are we all there? Or oh, somebody say, wait for me. Wait for me. Yeah, yeah. Let's wait what for passion? somebody. What okay. I don't know. It doesn't matter Anyone? because some people have their phones and okay. it can be different. All right. so Those that have their Bible, what do you have? NIV. Uh, NIV. Yeah. Oh, yours yeah, is NIV. NIV. Okay, so yeah. everybody, let's pull up NIV there. Yeah. Since we are, we are all, majority are using their phones. So you guys leave flow with the person that has a hard copy Bible. Yeah. NIV. So can we go? Are we there? Yes. Want to go? But see first, first the kingdom, kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things provided. Can we take it again? For seek first his kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided to you as well. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pray that the Lord bless the word, reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Please can we be seated. So this morning we'll be looking at the topic that says prioritize. Hmm. Prioritize. And it's, um, it's an interactive service. So we all will be talking. And thank God for the teaching on marriage that we talk, we heard about this morning. So it will also come, it's also connected. So when he was talking, I was like, praise God. Everything is all connected to the glory of God. I want to ask a question. Do you know that good things happen when you get your priorities straight? When you get it straight, that's when it happens. And when people see you, it will be as if, oh, this person has planned it. But it's because the person has done what? Gotten his priorities straight. Gotten his or her priorities right. The Bible says, seek ye first. So it means when you seek his kingdom first, then it enables you to put God first. Then every other thing, um, like they say in my country, they say every other thing is jara. That's is an addition. You know when you when you in my country when you go shopping, when you go to meet these um, elderly mamas, when they are selling, they have this cup or this bowl they used to marry to to measure what they want to sell. I don't know if some of us have understand it, especially the young ones here. Yeah. So, and then the, when they put it, then when the person wants to give you that or pour it into your container, you're saying, Mama, please, can you add a little to fill it up, to fill it up. And that's what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, when you seek the kingdom of God first, he said, every other thing is an addition. Every other thing, your job, your success, you're excelling in your class is an addition. Every other thing you do, every other thing you receive is an addition. Every other thing you receive is an addition. Praise the Lord. Every other thing you receive is an addition. He said, but seek ye. When you say seek first, that word first is to prioritize, to bring it to be the first. Then every other thing, marriage follows what? Okay, before marriage, what follows? You get a good education, probably. Then after that, what, what follows? You get a good job. Everybody wants a good job. You don't just want to get any house job. You want to get a good job. Then after that, you... After that, what do you do? Buy a house together. You do what? 
What do you say? I didn't get you. What do you say? She said buy us together. Have to get married first, all right? Yeah, but you know these days, do you know that if you ask some of these young people, they'll tell you, is it compulsory I get married? I've heard most of them say that. <laughs> like, is it compulsory I get married? Must I get married? And then when you're saying, oh, oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> maybe a parent can't do this. They say, did I ask you to bring me into this world? Praise the Lord. So, but what we are saying is that we should seek God first. Then every other thing is an addition. According to that old woman that he's selling in that store in my in my village back home in my nation, the addition is the jara. And you don't pay for it. But even this one that you are seeking God first, are we paying for it? It's just for us to do what? Walk in his ways. It's just for us what? To wake up in the morning, pray and say, Father, thank you for waking me up. And after that, pick your Bible and read. How many of us do that? Some do you study the Bible probably in the night. Maybe because of the nature of their job. Then when they wake up in the morning, they just pray. And they are rushing and they are, they are moving. And then at your job, in school, you have a friend, you are telling the person, Jesus loves you. Because God has made us to be and he's ambassador on the planet earth. And he wants us to do what? Tell someone about his son. Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Do we know also that nobody's life is ever all balanced? Rather, it's a conscious desire to choose your priorities every day. It is conscious. That I choose, that it's just like, okay, like the scenario in the Garden of Eden. God was the one that said, oh, let, uh, let me make he made man in his own image. Then he decided to bring what? A helpmate for man. And then when some things happened in the Garden of Eden, what did, what did Adam say? He said, it is the <laughs> wife you gave to me that has made me to sin. And at that point, God said, okay, I hands up. Go ahead and make your choice. And that is why we came to that point of what? Making our choices today. And God is just there watching but the only advice he has given, he said, seek you first, his kingdom. The only advice, the only advice he has given unto you, to me, to everyone here is that we should what? Seek first his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. To prioritize, it means to treat as more important. Probably we've entered, yeah, we've entered the new week. No, probably. We've entered the new week. And probably... There are some people who are so organized. I know Mr. G is so, so, so. He plans. <laughs> you can't just come and take him one away. You want to, you want to destabilize him from what I've studied about him. You want to destabilize him. So he has already said, on Monday I'm doing this, on Tuesday I'm doing this, on Wednesday I'm doing this. If you call him suddenly and say, <laughs> I said, Mr. G, on Wednesday, I want you to take prayer. He'll be like, oh, five minutes to the prayer, probably. You now say, I want you to take the prayer. He'll be like, Not that he won't take it. Yes. He will take it, but you will know that. No, you didn't that's do well. You didn't, yes, you will know that that's not how you operate. That's the right word. That's not, that's not how you operate. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it's also important to know the kind of people you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so that you don't take them. So the question we'll ask this morning, and I want everyone to participate because it's an interactive service, is how and what do I prioritize to make a big difference? in my society to make to be productive as a child of God because I have to be productive because God has created you and I here on the planet earth to make an impact in the life of people to be productive to bring something to innovate something and then people are like wow just like the people who innovated the, this electricity else will be in the dark true of us or someone who who brought about um, different clothing and for some people who love perfumes, people who brought about perfumes, some who love jewelries, the people who brought about it is an initiative. God has placed us here, whether we are 
whether the person is a child of God or not a child of God, to what? To be what? Productive. So how can I? How can I prioritize my time? Because there are a lot of things that can make you go off track. There are many things. There are many things. There are many things. Remember that what you prioritize determines the quality of life you live. For our young ones here, this is the time for you to what? Go to school. Mm. Study. If you prioritize your studies now, you find out tomorrow you won't find yourself doing an odd job. You won't find yourself doing an odd job. If you prioritize yourself now, tomorrow, that dream beautiful house, you want to, you want to get a bigger house than that one your dad or your mom has be able to do what? Achieve it. So there's time for everything. I called into the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Nothing moves until you you make effort to move it. The way this stuff is here, it can't move until I try to push it. If I don't push it, it will not move. Praise the Lord. If I don't push it, it will not move. Hard work will beat talent if talent does not work hard. I want us to take note of that. Your hard work can be, you have, you have a talent. You have a talent of, okay, just like my brother was able to couple this thing. This morning, I was, I was telling him, Ross, let's, let's just leave this. I said, I said, do it. we can do it, we can do it, you know? So, if you have the talent to couple things, but if you don't work hard to know what it takes to do it, it didn't just, it didn't just, come to eat this shape. He had to look at the manual that was there and then, and that was a little hard work he had to put into it. But if you find out that if, if you find, you find out that if you don't put that talent to work, you can't get something out of it. So we must work on whatever God has given you. What has God given you? What has God given you? What has God given you? My sister over there, what has God given you? You must work on it. You must work on it. And God is peculiar because, like, um, if you look at the scripture, it talks about um, when a, a master was traveling. He said he gave one five talents. He gave another what? Two talents. He gave another what? One talent. And when he came back, he wanted to know what he did with it. So the question for you and I this morning is, that talent that you know God has given not to you, what are you doing with it? It's a food for thought. So what should I prioritize in life? What should I prioritize? Number one, what should we prioritize? Based on the scripture we read, I think that's the first, that's the first example. Seek his kingdom first. And in seeking his kingdom, we must learn to do what? Walk with him. And that's why we sang that hymn, trust and obey. Because when you want to, when you say you want to, to, to walk with God, you hear when God will say, hello, stop there. Mm. At that point, it could be very difficult. When God says, no, stop there. Or you say, no, is this, just like we're talking about the marriage. No, it's this guy I like. The guy is cute. The guy is handsome. The guy is tall. He's got all the physique. He's well read. And you list everything out. And God is saying, no. He's not the right guy for you. And you said, no. I must go into it. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will give us, will help us. He will help us to, to obey his instruction. Because most times, it could be tough, especially when, should I use the word? You've fallen so much in love. <laughs> And then you are telling, and the problem is the time your parents are saying, no, it's not this guy, or it's not this lady. It's very hard to say no. It's very hard to accept whatever is being said. So what else are we to prioritize? Number two. What else can we prioritize? It's interactive. It's not just only me now. Oh, I should sit down. You said... Talent, we have hard work. Yeah. Not, you know, I feel the process of working hard or trying to achieve what we have as our goal. 
also prioritize our time. Time, okay. So can we explain time? How do I prioritize my time? Yes, sir. If you have, uh, say you have like a lot of homework, if you have a lot of homework, but then you have, you say you play a sport, but you also have the sport, like the same night you have a lot of homework, then you can try to do the homework before you go to the sport, and then if you have homework left, you can do it after. Okay, yeah, I think I agree with you because I, I think I've heard that in playing all those games, if you're not doing well academically, they can drop you. So you have to learn to prioritize your time well. You have to make sure you finish your homework just like you told us. Okay, great. What other things can we do as parents prioritizing our time? At least uh, it's a teenager has told us what we need to do. Yeah, as parents, when we look at the aspect of time. Daddy's mommies, what can well, we do for them? Like for parents, right? I'm not just only parents. Very. In life, there are interesting many and critical few. Otherwise, you'll be distracted. There are so many things to do. But if you need, when we speak about prioritization, you need to ask yourself, is this a need or a want? Mm. Is this, does this fall under the interesting many or the critical few mm. right because you don't have more than 24 hours a day so how many time time management itself I, I always say it's a misnomer because you don't manage what you don't control mm. it's up to you to know what is that critical few that comes first before the interesting many mm. so that even if I don't get to the interesting many in a day mm. I'm still on track Right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. I have a, a brother that when we once we get to the office, what I notice he does, we say, no, he'll write number one, I'll do this first. Number yeah. two, three, four, mm -hmm. five. So as he does them each day, I see him tick it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He ticks it. He checks it up. That I've done this. Then the one that cannot be done, he moves it to the next day. Exactly. And that falls under your interesting name. Praise hmm. the Lord. Because you cannot be doing what you're supposed to do tomorrow today. Yes, yes. yes. Praise the it Lord. It doesn't make any sense. I pray God will help us. As we learn this, the ability to put it to work, I know that's always the problem mm -hmm. we all have. It's very easy. <laughs> it's very easy to say, talk, talk, mm. talk, 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 talk. But to act is always the problem. And that's why every time you hear me say, God, give us the grace to do. Not to just be only hear us, but here to do us of what we are saying. Praise the Lord. What else can we prioritize? We also need to prioritize our health. Also, Thank you, Mommy. We are not too busy to live. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes when it comes to health, mm -hmm. or when it comes to choosing wisely in terms of what we eat, or the time we exercise, right? You will see that that's when you now have a million things to do. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, you know what? I'm working hard. There's no need to be on a treadmill. There's no need to take mm -hmm. a walk. There's no need to, you know, we have the good excuses mm -hmm. not to do what. But then you ask yourself, who would do those things if you break down? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I believe in choosing, uh, like, um, yes. the Bible portion we read. Mm -hmm. After that, also, we should pay very close attention to mm -hmm. our heart. Because we are the power engine house, if anything yes. falls out. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are the power engine house. house. Mm -hmm. I have it here. Prioritize your health. Mm -hmm. Make your health an investment yeah. so it won't become an expenditure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take care of your body from age 1 to 50. Are we all listening? Mm -hmm. From age 1 to 50, take care of your body. Don't say, oh, I'm too young. Uh, I got this. I can eat whatever I like. Jokes. So that your body can take care of you from 50 upwards. Mm. Because that's the time the body will now start taking care of you. Yeah. Because if you don't take care of, it's just like someone who overworks, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't rest. He he, he is always so tired. By the time he's now 50, 60, he begins to tell of the body. The person won't have stamina to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. At that point, the person is now 
begins to slow down. Meanwhile, the the age mate who took time to take care of his or her health at that time can still do some things. And that's why you see some people as that so so, so age, they are, they are looking older, another is looking younger. So what do you do now at your at this age? How do you use that body? How do you use that body? Don't spend your health to make fortunes so you won't end up using the fortune to get your health back. So people keep telling you, work, 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 work. If you can remember what um, Pastor Kemi said last Sunday, he said something that we're not here to do what? To keep clocking. We are here to do what? What do you think you are here to do? That's the sick ye first day. <laughs> you are here to be an ambassador for Christ. You are here to sell somebody about But Some people will tell you, oh no, I have to work. I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I have to work. And the Bible talks about the day of rest. <laughs> Which day is the day of rest? Which means rest is important. It's important. I want us to, from the aspect of health, I want us to look at our diet. I think she said something about our diet. Let us eat well. I want us to remember that you are what you eat. You are what you eat. If you eat junk, it will show. If you try to do some exercise, it will show. When people see you, they will see it. They will see it. Then, and it's very important we drink water. I ain't really a doctor, but just <laughs> I did a lot of reading on this just to come here because. <laughs> but I think the doctor can speak better. That Drink. is a new thing going on now. We call it food and water as medicine. Mm. Yeah. Can you? When you eat yeah. and you eating that food, you are intentional that this food is my medicine. It's more preventative. It's safer and cheaper. When you're already using food as your medicine, then you will be you are trying to be more proactive in preventing what ordinarily could have caused you to have sicknesses right. and chronic conditions. Okay. So at that point, food becomes medicine for you. And that's the type of medicine we encourage people to take. Mm. That's the type of medication that is better. Mm. When you are mm. eating your fruits, vegetables, drinking water. You have chosen that path than being on medications that would be, that would treat or manage diabetes or high blood pressure, right? Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Then we we'll look at under the aspect of our health. We we'll look at exercise. It's very important. Um, I, I do hear my brother say he does walking for how long? One hour? Yeah, every day. Every day. Every day. And then we yeah. are. Yeah. Then we also uh, we also encourage to 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 build our muscles yeah. because as we are getting older, it's weak. Yeah. So we encourage to build our muscles. Then also in the aspect of health, sleep is very important. Rest is very important. Make sure you are sleeping well, not staying asleep. You know, sometimes someone says, "I want to go and lie down," and you lie down, and what happened? Your brain is thinking of all that happened throughout the day. <laughs> and then probably in the next 30 minutes or one hour, you stand up. Did that person really rest? So I want us to take note that there's a lot of magic that takes place when we sleep. Our body is resting. The metabolism, everything is doing what it ought to do. So it's very important. There are some people who say it's only night shift work they do. I keep wondering whether it won't tell on them at old age. At old age, it will tell on them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And let us try to eliminate stress. Because stress is what kills people. Kills people. Stress. I must do this. I must build a house. I must. Uh, <laughs> I must buy a house. I must. I must. I must do what my people are. My mates are doctors. They have. They have PhD. I must get PhD. My my mates bought a brand new car. I must buy one. My mates is doing this. I must. But you find out when the person is six feet, what happens? 
When the person is six feet, I heard the story of a man just this over this weekend. He said this man has this golden wristwatch, and he dare not allow any of the children to touch that wristwatch. So if you come close to that wristwatch, it's like you're looking for trouble. And lo and behold, that man died. So when they stole the son, <laughs> the son flew in from another state. You know what he did? He went straight to the father's room to look for that golden wristwatch. <laughs> Then he wore it. Then he went to the father's graveyard. I said, Hi, Dad. I got your wristwatch. Come collect it from me. Mm. Mm. So, what do you prioritize? What's so, 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 so important to you? Mm. Praise the Lord. What again are we supposed to prioritize in life? Uh, your what? Family. 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 Where, where I wrote it down here, I talked, I, I related it to relationship. I, I, I teamed it as relationship. So when you said that you should prioritize your family, who are we prioritizing in your family? Your immediate who? Your immediate yeah, who? Oh, okay. Your children. Let's start with the children. Let's start with the children. It's very important that we make out time for our children. There's something I wrote here. I said, a child that is not trained or corrected will become an arrow in the heart of that parent later in life. If that child is not trained, you want to correct that child. You say, ah, no, leave him. He's just a child. You want to say, no, don't do this. Don't go that way. No. You say, no. He will get it later. The Bible says what? Train up a child. Where? In the way of the Lord. It's not just anyhow. In the way of the Lord. He says so that when that child grows, he will do what? A time comes that that child will leave your house. Yeah. Mommy is not there. Daddy is not there. It's whatever they have trained that child. That they, that's how the child will now live. Praise the Lord. It's the way the child is trained. I pray the Lord will help us as parents to do what is right. Train up our children in the way of the Lord. Let us make out time to attend the activities. They're having, um, what's this? Um, what they, what are, they're going for games. Mm -hmm. They're going for what again? What's this one that they do midterm that you have to come check? Yeah, teachers. Yeah, yeah. Conference. You know, some parents, they don't even say, oh, I'm working. They don't have time to attend. I heard the story. You know? Maybe God wanted me to hear those stories to help me with this topic. I heard the story of a woman. That was last week. Someone was just talking about that woman. Very wealthy woman. Well-made woman. She's a lawyer. She's an attorney. But at her old age, we find out that she has the money. But the problem she has now is that the children don't come around to check on her. And then there's one particular child. The person that was telling me this story said she, he, she was wondering why are these children not coming to check on her? It's not that she needs money from any one of them. She said she now asked one of them. That one said, when I had these parent teachers, that she's always like, I have a case here. I have a case there. She said, now, I don't have time for her. Praise the Lord. So that scripture that talks about me reaping whatever we sow, is very important. It's in every area. In every area, it's in every area, and that's what they say, right? When we talk about work life balance, work life balance means that when you are meeting your deadline at work, don't miss family timelines because work is not gonna take over that family, it's irreplaceable. That's part one of your irreplaceables. But job you can replace. Your job can let you go or you can leave them. Right. But family is stuck with you for life. So even me, when I talk to my team members, I tell them, in as much as you meet your goals at work, don't, meet you, don't miss your family time lines. Yeah. When those kids are going for sports, they need you. Yeah. You, can, you can see those days again. Yeah. Those memories will come and go. If you don't be there for them, no. it's really a problem. And then, as you're, as you're growing up, you need 
take vacation with them. Yeah. You need to have time to bond with them. Yeah. Because a time comes, you are begging them to come home and no one yeah. wants to come yeah. home. Yeah. They have their stuff to do. Yeah. It's something that we should think about as parents. Because once you miss it now, Jesus, it takes only that child that knows God to look back at that parent. So we should learn to prioritize relationship. Relationship with our children is very important. And then I would like to say the Bible talks about we not grieving our children. We did something, don't grieve their spirit man. Don't grieve the spirit man of that child. The child did something. You might say, no, I'm correcting the child. But in your correction, let it be with love. You know, children, there's a way you will do something to them and then they will just say, in two years' time, they will remind you. They will remind you of that thing you said. So it's very important that we are mindful of it. And we should also take note that we are caretakers. And we are going to give account for these children. God is going to ask you, what did you do to help this child to make it to heaven? And applicable to the children. What did, what did the Bible say about you as a child to do for your parents? Obey your parents. What did the Bible say you should do? What did your Bible say you should do? I know, see that here. Yeah. What did your Bible say you should do? Obey your parents. So how do you obey your parents? Let's be practical. Until we listen to the instructions they give you, we should be obedient. That's the word. Listen to the instructions. When they are telling you, go do your homework, you might look as if they are pressurizing you. But they just know. They just know that at that time you need to do it else. It might be so difficult in the future. Because there is time for everything. Praise the Lord. Let me move to something else. We've talked about children. Let's talk about spouse. We're looking at relationship. What do I prioritize as spouse? I, was, I said here, the spouse you did not treat well or make out time for now or when you were much younger, when you are older, that spouse will not take care of you. It may be hard to hear, but that's the truth. Because when you now get older, especially you find out most times it's always like the, the wife is always younger than the guy. So the husband at the old age now maybe is more weaker. He can't do some things. But because he was not so caring, loving, at old age, you see the wife. We're not saying that the Christian woman should do it. But because we are human, there's this tendency to display that and say it's favor time. That's why I use the word that whatever we sow, we reap in every aspect of our life. Whatever you sow, you reap. The scripture said, men, love your wives. It says women should be submissive. But I want to encourage men that your spouse, try to help them. Because you find out that most men, there are some men who just want to say, oh, I don't want my wife to walk. There are some men like that. They say, I don't want my wife to walk. Meanwhile, she's here to achieve. There's, a, there's, there's something that God has said she must achieve. And if the person is not a business person, there will be a lot of issues in that home because of that. This is quite a sensitive discussion because I know most men don't agree to that. <laughs> But the, that's just the truth. That's just the truth. Let's help to build the dreams of your wife. Because if you try to help to build their dream, you will have peace of mind in that home. But if you try to let neglect their dreams, there's going to be fire on the mountain. <laughs> there will be going to be fire on the mountain. Another issue I want us to look at is men. Let me, our men try to be the priest of the home. Most men are not the priest of their home. We only hear of women who are, they are doing midnight prayer. 
these children will survive. We're only hearing women who are saying, children, let's pray. Why the men are saying, you guys go pray, I'm fine. But today, I want to, part of what a man should prioritize in their life is being the priest of their home. Because God has made the man the head. That head figure is part of being the priest of your home. To be able to say, God, this is what I want to happen in my home. I've had, I've had a discussion with teenagers whereby most of the, the young ladies are saying, I want to marry a man who we don't pray for back then. during the time of delivery, maybe the person is taking to see her, the person is standing in the gap and saying, God, my wife must put to bed. I don't want to see us and it must be so. And he's standing on it and it comes to pass. Or even if he sees it, it's not a problem. But a man who can decree, that's the man who is the priest of his own. Because these days we see more of is the mummies that are the ones standing in the gap. The question is, what are the daddies doing? And that headship is the coffin, right? If this is the headship, who is the coffin? Meaning that you should also be in the place of prayers for your family. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Very important. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So I've looked at so the spouses. Like <laughs> <laughs> so I've looked at right. the grace of God. On that, on that relationship, we have looked at the we spouse. Pray. We've looked at the children. And when you talk, talk about prioritize your friendship, I don't know, maybe some of us have people who are our friends not just only your spouse. Mm. There are some people who tell you it's only my spouse that is my friend. Mm. Well, mm. fine. But fine. let me just, yeah. can I chime in there? Yes, yes, sir. Watch your friends, oh. Yes. Yeah. Just telling you right yeah. now. You are one friend away from heaven or you are one <laughs> friend away from hell. Yeah, yes. Sir. Because if you get the wrong friend, particularly as we talk about broken home earlier, mm. and you will not believe how many marriage end in divorce. Because of one friend that befriends the wife or one friend that befriends the husband in the office. Let's go. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Yeah, you know what? Your wife is and children are going to be home. Yeah. Why, why run to them? And God's with us now. And it takes an hour on, on Friday, 5 to 6, yeah. with wings and some drinks. The husband that goes to church, he drinks. Eats a couple of wings, have a couple of shots of drink. Before you know it, his eyes is no longer on the wife. His wife is looking at the secretary in the office, and that's where it begins. Yeah. So I'm just going to say be very careful in your friend selection. It's better you have one or two that are solid than you want to be that's a superstar. I'll be willing to say no. Even in the office, no, nope, sorry, not going to do. No, not gonna do thank God it's Friday. I'm not going to the bar at the sun. No, I'm not going there. Me, I'm going home. Tell your boss, thank you. I'm not going with you. Good. Also, in the that aspect, I, I remember when they were taking the Sunday school, when we were talking about broken home, um, some women, once anything happened in their home, they're calling their friend. I think they used yep. this as an example. And Unfortunately, that friend you are calling, yep. you are saying, you are reporting your husband to, yeah. will just tell you all kinds of nasty things. Thank Meanwhile, you. our Thank home you. is not even it's, better. Yeah. She half to... better. It's not even half better than yours. Yeah. But because probably it's possible the person is even jealous of you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, he now does what? It's a perfect timing. <laughs> so, he now helps you, helps you to castigate the man the more. Yeah. Or brainwashes you to do the wrong things. So, let's be careful. Please let me tap somebody by your side and say, beware. Beware of friends. Beware of friends. It can even be a church friend. Beware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can be that like church sister you think is so over spiritual, and then the slightest thing you go and tell that spiritual over spiritual sister or yeah. over spiritual brother. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Let's beware. Yes. Let's beware. Let's be mindful of who we relate with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's be mindful and let's be sensitive in the spirit. Yeah. Why well, use the word sensitive? Because. 
can all go to the same church, but that person's belief might be different. Yeah, Let's be sensitive in the spirit. And that's why we sang that hymn that said, trust and obey. Because at a point of time, God, the Holy Spirit will be telling you, stay clear. Yep. But because you are so attached, you don't want to be detached. Mm -hmm. Let's be careful. If you have that beside the spirit, be careful. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you, you may not even, you are listening, but you are not obeyed. Right? Yeah. So it's always good when you have the discerning spirit is telling you your core values or what you believe in. It's mm. not it's not aligned with what you're seeing mm. in that frame. Mm. It's a red flag. Yep. Because two cannot work together except they are agree. Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, True. another thing that we should prioritize is what we listen to. Yep. And what we watch. Can you say something about that? Sometimes you don't realize that when you're singing a song, you don't realize what the true and my intention and what the song mm -hmm. that you're singing. So you have to like be part of the music of the song. And yeah, thank you so much. I like that. Uh, Pascal, do you have something to say? What you listen to? <laughs> We're looking at what you listen to and what you watch. I tried to do a little study. Let me give you time to think about it. I did a little study. Okay, you ready? Okay, good. Uh, Scary movies. Scary movies. Okay, how does that, what does that do? I think scary movies are the most best movies to watch. Because uh, sometimes the stuff that they're preaching a movie is not. Or they don't want to preach it, but the stuff that they're saying is not the best. It's not the best. Great. Great. Mm. I, I try to do a little study. Say so many are into watching pornography these days. Even from the age of eight, you have children that watch pornography. You know, these days, if a, ch a, a child is crying or disturbing the parent, what do parents do these days? And you know, the devil is so cunning. He's looking for, he, he knows he's, he's in hell. He's looking for more people to go to hell with him. So he has used this. He has used this to do what? To distract people and parents because they just put I want my free time what do they do they just give that child the phone and the child starts and you know the devil is so funny most times they are watching the pornography when I say children I mean from eight years old yeah. from, from the research I I, I looked into this uh, last year yeah. eight years old then we have 57 percent of young adults who are into pornography today 57% they're into pornography because you don't know what they are watching and that's why we encourage our parents try to check what they are doing let's try to check them let's try to check them I pray God will help us it's not easy then you have 56% of the first cases being caused by pornography what brought about that divorce is pornography probably that person is just goes there and, and you know the funniest thing have you, have you observed that your phone sometimes is like if you are thinking of something and once you start Googling, that's what it will bring out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I keep wondering what kind of demonic spirit is that? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine someone who goes to pornography once. What happens the next time he opens? And the Google search traps you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even like the, the common GPS we use now, mm -hmm. he knows where I go. In the morning on Sundays, he's already telling me the routes to come to church. <laughs> or when I go to pick him up, he already gonna bring it up for me. So all these things, the world, as the technology is advancing, it has its own pros and cons. Yes. yes. So bad things are even easy to do these days. Yeah, very easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear what you guys are saying here. Can you share with us? Chelsea, oh, are you on the phone? Yeah, yeah. Talking about the GPS thing, like, you know, saying, like, you know, after, like, talking, like, you know, 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 like, you
that's scary. Because one day he had a game. I didn't know the venue was changed. The moment I got in, and he was already telling me the route to go to the right place. Mm -hmm. I denied it. I said, come and shut up. <laughs> when I got to school, I found out he was in that place that GPS wow. was already telling me to go. <laughs> AI. Yes, simply connected. Artificial intelligence. Please, can we pull up our Bible? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, I would like everybody to read it, please. Proverbs 4, 23. I'd like all of us to read it. Can we all pick our Bibles? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Can you help me? Yeah. Can we all read it? Or should I wait for somebody? Yes. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, can we read it together? Above all heads, guide the Lord for everything you do flows from me. Wow. Did you hear that word? I like how it explains. It said, for everything you do does what? Flows from me. Another translation says, for it, you say, guard your heart above all else. Say, for it determines the course of your life. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful what we watch, what we listen to, you know? And all these things we listen to, watch, with this Google, with the internet now, what is in your heart? What we feed our what you are, Yes. Input and food. And what you are watching, yeah. That, then that's the picture you lie down. That's the first thing you, what you listen to. You know when you, you listen to a song consistently, if you are not careful, you just lie down. Your spirit man is singing that song. Yeah, I'm surprised because me sometimes I wake up in the morning like, I'm singing a song or I'm like, how did this happen? Because I sleep with uh, gospel music. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want us to take note that until your mind gives in, until your mind gives in, your breath doesn't go out. Until your mind gives in, your breath doesn't go out. So be strengthened with might in your inner man. Let us be strengthened with might in our inner man. Strengthened with might with the word of God in our inner man. So what we feed ourselves with, not just the food alone, our mind with, is very important. That's why that scripture says, guard your heart. Strong-minded people are the ones who will survive all the challenges of life. And it takes that word of God in you to enable you to be able to face that challenge. You are praying concerning a thing, you're not getting results, you're not getting response. God is saying wait, or God is saying no. It takes a strong-minded person with the word of God to still say, yes, I know my Redeemer lives. Praise the Lord. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You have the voice of the mind and the voice of the mouth. Why I use the word, the voice of the mind? Because there's that voice in the mind that tells you, go left. Another says, go right. Another says, don't do it. Your mom will not allow you to do it. Your mom is not there. But that's, there's that voice in your mind that tells you, your mom will not support this. Or your dad will say no to this. So there is a voice of the mind and a voice of the, of the mouth. And that's where we, we encourage ourselves to do it. Speak positively. Speak positive things. Yes, you are, you're, you're feeling a bit uh, feverish, but you're saying, I am healed. I am made whole. You're looking at that uh, test question. It looks so difficult. You're saying, do this mountain. I'm pulling you down. I got the answer. Praise the Lord. Is somebody following me? Yeah. Are we following me? Are you guys following me? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want us to, I want to encourage us, but when positive thoughts fill up your mind, positive words will flow out of it. And that's why we are to guard what we watch, what we listen to, the kinds of people we associate with, because, you know, they'll be saying a lot of things around us. Because when the positive words fill our hearts, we tend to move in the direction of positive things. Let us be aware of what we say, because the word, the word we speak is a seed. As daddies, as mommies, please let's be beware of what we say to our children. Even when we are angry. Because immediately we say it, the land, the sea, the waters, the what? They have to pick it. Their own is to make sure it comes to pass. Positive or negative 
words. And children, let's be mindful of what we say, what comes out on to our mouths concerning ourselves, our siblings, our friends, our parents. Our parents. What you say sets what you get. What you say, it sets what you get. Once you are saying, I can't do it, then you see yourself slacking behind. But when you say, I can do it, you see there's this inner strength that pushes you to keep moving on. So what you say, sets what you get. There is power in every word said, whether it's a positive word or a negative word. And remember your words, they fuel the self-esteem of your children. You say that child is beautiful. It's just like last week I, I was at a program and, the, and the, the prayer program I announced the other day and the pastor there said, he looked at me and said, do you know you're beautiful? Has somebody ever told you that? I was like, yes. Yes. I'm not like that little young girl that one boy comes to and tells, Hello, you're beautiful. You know you're the sugar in my tea. You're the honey. And then because they've not heard it from their dad or their mom, they are, they are swept off their feet. And they're like, Oh, no, this guy really loves me. Hello. He doesn't love you. <laughs> He's just playing with your emotions. Sorry. <laughs> it's just play with your emotions. Your words well the self-esteem of your children. That child is looking at it. Oh, this math is too difficult. Just tell the child you can do it. You have the brain of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have an excellent spirit. You know, even, even in that child's dream, the child is lying down. He said, no, my mom said, I have the brain of my Lord Jesus Christ. If it's Jesus, he will pass this much, so I must pass it. Mm. Or like when you say, I know you can't do it. I know. Mm. <laughs> so the, the child is already what? Discouraged. Mm. Discouraged. I have the story of, of, of a, man, a man told the child, the child, when the child was going to school, he told the child, he said, you know, if anybody tries anything on you in school, you know, as God is our father, I am your father. I'm protecting you. How God protects us. And nobody can dare do anything. So this child went to school as an undergraduate. Then there's this occult guys. Do you guys, have you heard about occult guys? Cultists in schools. So one of them saw him and collected his phone from him. Then as the guy was going away, he said, Hi, my dad will haunt you and he will get you. <laughs> the guy looked at him and said, who is your dad? But the guy walked some steps forward. He stopped. He turned back. He now said, what did you say? The boy said, I said my dad will haunt you. No matter where you go to, he will get you. So you can't go with that phone. The guy now said, take. Don't say that thing again. <laughs> so you can see the confidence that child has in his father. And that is the confidence as, a, as children of God we should have about our Father in heaven. Amen. That no matter what anybody tries to say, no matter what anybody tries to do, you've got a Father who's got your back. Yes. It might take a long time to get to that position, but I want to tell you, come on somebody, that you are going to get there. Amen. You are going to get it no matter what it may be. There's this God who's got your back. Amen. Just have that confidence. Just have that picture of that little boy every time and say, I have a father who knows me and cares for me. Please, can we stand on our feet? What are you supposed to prioritize? Prioritize. Prioritize. See, be the first of the kingdom of God. I don't know what is it in your life you've looked at. Everything we've talked about, relationship, we talk about time, we talk about walking with God, seeking God first. We've talked about what our health. I want you to talk to God and say, Father, help me to put to prioritize what needs to be prioritized in my life in my family in my marriage in my christian life in my christian life probably we're not going out we're not evangelizing as we ought to we're not telling how many people did you evangelize to? did you tell about jesus last week this morning yesterday 
I want us to just talk to God and say, Father, please help me. Lord, help me. As a parent, as a parent, are you prioritizing those children? Are you doing what you ought to do for them? As children, are you prioritizing doing what is right for your parents? They are telling you, wash the dishes. Are you doing it? They are telling you, oh, um, you, you need to clean the house. Are you doing that? Clean your room. Are you doing that? I want you to talk to God this morning and say, Father, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. No matter how little it may be. And, and I don't know. What, the, what are the kinds of words that come out of your mouth? I say, Father, parental, most times you are saying the negative word. I want you to talk to God this morning and say, Father, help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Create in me a clean heart, a clean heart, so that what will come out of my mouth, oh God, will be positive words, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Yeah, our time is fast. Ben, it's time for us to take our offering. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we take our offering? So it's... We're doing everything quickly because the time is fast to spend. Just need six minutes and we're out of here. Receive my praise, O oh Lord. Receive my praise, O oh Lord. Blessings and glory I give unto you. Receive my praise, O oh Lord. 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 Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory I give unto you. Receive, receive my praise, O oh Lord. Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you, Lord, for what you have given unto us. You said we should give and it should be given back unto us. That good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over. Father, for as many that have given this money, Father, the blessings that follows givers of those that give, let it be their portion. As many that have given their tithe, maybe during the week or we give this week, Father, we pray. The blessings that follow tightest, let it be their portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let the windows of heaven be made open unto them, O oh God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. these ones will not be sick. These ones will not lack anything good. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please let me see that. How many minutes more? Five minutes more. Good. <laughs> Praise God. So we're going to, uh, um, just for the announcement, we want to remind us of Bible studies on Tuesday. And we're still teaching on what? What's our topic? I want to know whether you guys follow us. What we're talking about. We've been talking about a particular topic for the, for the past how many months? Parables. Yes, yes. Parables. Parables of Jesus. Parables of Jesus Christ. So we've, we've talked about the sower. We talked about what, who again? The, the, peer, the great values and peers. Yeah. Have we talked about the Good Samaritan? Not yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So we talked about the lost coin. Yeah. We talked about the lost coin too. Okay. So there are many things we've been talking about. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. On Thursday we have prayer. Um, 7 p.m. by Telegram. Tuesday is on Zoom. 7 p.m. Um, that's the Bible study on Tuesday. Prayer. Thursday and then next week Sunday is it's going to be a healing service. It's going to be a healing service. By the grace of God, we're going to have a healing service here. Please tell someone that is sick that they should come to your church. <laughs> that God is going to do something outstanding. Somebody that is deaf, tell the person, Come, my God is going to do something outstanding. Somebody that is dumb, please invite the person. Somebody that cannot walk, invite the person to come. You know one thing as children of God, it is not us that heals. It is God that does the work. All you just need to do, you and I need to do, is to do what? Just lay our hands and pray and decree. Just speak. Speak the word. And what will God do? His own is to do what? Back it up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want you to tell your friend. I want you to kindly invite somebody. Don't look at it that oh, 
hey, can this place contain us? I bet it. Just we'll be up there, right? Yeah, just dare what God can do. Dare what God can do. Just dare Him. Dear God. It's God we're talking about. We're not talking of me. I'm, I'm just an individual. We're not talking about you. We're not talking about who is going to preach that day. We're talking about what this almighty God can do. So please, invite a friend. Tell somebody. Somebody that you know that cannot speak, that cannot hear well, that cannot see well. Tell the person, come to my church. We have a healing service. And you'll be prepared. You'll be prepared. You'll be prepared. So it means this week you've got to do more. More prayer and fasting. <laughs> because he said there are some things that cannot be conquered except through what? Prayer and fasting. Thank you. Oh, wow. I love that. The response from this side gave me courage. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, can we stand up as we round up the service? God bless us. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord. Hallelujah for all you have done for us. Hallelujah. We are grateful. Oh, this word, this particular scripture, struck in my mind this morning. I want, us to, I want you to open it, Isaiah 45, verse 33. And you're going to decree those words there into your own life. As you decree it into your life, you decree it into the life of the church and speak to springs of praise in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 45, verse 3. Please let's all pull up our Bibles. Isaiah 45, and verse 3. 45, and verse 3. Isaiah 45, and verse 3. Isaiah 45, and verse 3. Isaiah 45 and verse 3. Our time is going. Yes. Isaiah 45 and verse 3. Can we all read together? 45 and verse 3. Yeah, please help me. Someone go close to her. Yeah, because everybody have to read it. Isaiah 45 and verse 3. Are we all ready? Is there somebody we have to wait for? Is there somebody we have to wait for? Ready, ready. Let's go. Okay, let's go. One, two, go. I now will give you treasures, riches stored in secret places. So, and I so that you may know that I am the Lord God, God of Israel, who summons you by name. I want you to kindly put your name in that place. And I will give, give Titi Layo treasures hidden in the darkest secret And I will do to Titi Layo, they know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel. The one who calls the city like by name. And so that shall be for you in Jesus' name. As we go this week, the Lord will give you hidden treasures where you least expect. Even for this church, even as we're looking for a location, that the Lord will give us hidden treasures in the name of Jesus. We speak into I want you as you're as I'm decreeing, please be decreeing into your life. I decree into your life. That word of God you just read, decree it into your life. Say, Father, as I go this week, hidden treasure is mine. In dark places, secret riches, secret riches is my portion. Is that of my children. In the name of Jesus, you will prove to everyone around me that you called me, that you called me by your name. You will prove to them that you are my God. You will prove to them in the name of Jesus. You are giving us these streams of grace. Easy, the hidden treasures. In the name of Jesus, that particular location where we're supposed to be, you are providing it for us. In the name of Jesus, a city without a wall. Lord, we speak it into existence. In the name of Jesus, we call forth that location for us. We call it forth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have decreed. Father, as we have decreed, we, we, we decreed this day that so shall it be for us in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit. That this week is blessed. And we, as we go out, riches, favor, breakthrough, good news, will swore on new wings according to what the theme of this month. And this week, Lord, we will lay our hands upon the sick and they will receive healing. Thank you, my Father. Glory to your name. For every word of God we've heard this morning from the Bible and Sunday school till even the sermon, every aspect of the sermon, we ask for grace to be doers of this word and not just only hearers. Thank you, my Father. 
Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our watchword. The Lord maketh poor, and he maketh rich. He bringeth low, and he lifts it up. I am lifted. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Do have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you.